Jay asks, do I have a dream piece of furniture that I'd like to DIY if I had unlimited time and money? I'd definitely like to make an Eames lounge chair someday. I'll put an image of that on screen now in case you're not familiar with it. I also really like the mid-century modern stuff by Ladarax and I've had some ideas about a concept on how to recreate that kind of utilitarian shelving system using modern materials and I've done some designs and concepts around that sort of stuff um, on SketchUp but I haven't got around to building any of it yet so that might be a future project. Moa Facts asks how much my whole workshop is worth and also what impact driver I would recommend. I've only ever used three impact drivers. My first was an Erbauer from Screwfix and that died after about 11 months, so I got a refund for that. The second I got was the Makita. I'll put the model number on screen now. That was fantastic and it's really cheap too, so that's a decent one. The one I'm using now is by Hikoki and that's been fantastic too. It's got a lot more features than some of the other impact drivers available, but it's a lot more expensive, so that's worth considering. In terms of how much my workshop is worth, I'll do a very quick calculation now. I'm assuming you mean the tools inside the workshop rather than the actual building itself. Yeah, a lot of money, probably somewhere between six and a half and seven thousand pound in tools. Um, but I don't want to put anyone off with that figure. Woodworking doesn't have to be that expensive. Also worth noting that some of my tools were gifted to me by companies like Hikoki and they tend to be their more premium tool offerings so they are very expensive tools. I'm very lucky to have that kind of support but yeah like I say you don't really need to spend that kind of money to get up and running. Lewis asks which tool I wish I'd bought earlier. This might be a bit of a boring answer, but probably either an air filtration unit or my M-Class dust extractor, because when you start doing woodworking regularly, you do start to worry about how much dust you're inhaling and how your lungs are going to deal with all of that fine dust. Awesome Pro 2.0 Gaming asks, do I find it hard to be a YouTuber and not being able to just make things as often as I like without worrying about recording clips for videos? That is a bit of a problem. Um, but I do occasionally make things without filming. For example, my bandsaw stand I made fairly recently. I've also done a lot of house related woodworking projects recently which I haven't filmed because it just takes so much time setting up the camera and editing the videos. It's always surprising how quickly you can get things done when you don't have to worry about setting up a camera. And also it is more enjoyable working on something where you can just focus on that thing rather than messing about with a camera. Couple of questions about any intentions to use a CNC, 3D printer or laser engraver in the workshop. I don't have any intentions whatsoever to be honest. I've had emails from companies asking if they could send me CNC's to try in my videos and I'm just not interested. I guess never say never to some degree. If I get really bored with my current tools and the projects that I'm doing at the moment, then I might look to explore new avenues. But I think the main reason I got into woodworking was because it was something that I could do in isolation away from a computer screen. So yeah, that side of things doesn't really appeal to me to be honest. But nothing against CNC's or CNC users. I think they're brilliant at what they do, but it's just not for me. Zethan and Mark ask if there's a woodworker on YouTube that I'd like to collaborate with. When I did my last q and I got asked the same question and my answer was John Heiss. And following that, John saw that video somehow and got in touch with me and we ended up collaborating on a project which was a dream come true for me because John is one of my biggest inspirations. So maybe in this video, if I was to say another one of my biggest inspirations, that wish might come true again. Who knows? But there are hundreds of YouTube woodworkers that I'd love to collaborate with, um, but it's finding the time that's the problem. I've got so much going on at the moment, so many woodworking projects, house projects, and then I'm busy with my day job as well. I just can't see collaborations being high on the priority list anytime soon. Ken asks, do I still work at my normal job or have I given it up? Yes, I do still work my day job. I work three days a week for them and I work three days a week doing YouTube and woodworking stuff. And to be honest, that's not likely to change anytime soon. A few people have asked about my favorite YouTube channels. Uh, I'm not watching as much woodworking stuff now as I used to, particularly the workshop based stuff because I've just been watching so much of it for so many years now. But there are a couple of channels that I would call out as being particularly interesting to me at this point in time. One would be Thomas Johnson, Restoration Channel. 
Another is Gid the Joiner, who I think I've mentioned in a video before. He does a lot of on-site carpentry uh, and he talks you through his thought process as he's doing it. He's filming it all on his mobile phone, but they're fantastic videos. And also Alistair Dimmock's channel, which I've also mentioned before. He's got a fantastic series of videos about building a garden room, which would be really useful to anyone who wants to build a workshop. He goes into so much detail and he's put so much thought and research into the videos and the process of building. Really recommend those videos too. Also the restoration couple who've got some really good videos about home renovation and stuff like that, which to me is really helpful at the moment because that's what I'm doing with my new home. But I also watch loads of non-woodworky stuff like Atomic Shrimp, Simon Bloke in the Woods and Foresty Forest. Those three channels are mainly about nature, foraging, living in a van and going for walks that kind of stuff. Camera Conspiracies and The Vegetable Police, two channels by the same guy, a chap called Casey who is just hilarious. I uh, really enjoy watching his videos. Camera Conspiracies is all about the camera industry and how they're continually letting him down by not releasing the camera of his dreams. And The Vegetable Police documents his food intake and various diets that he goes on. Quite interesting. I should also call out my mate Alex's channel called Leader of Our Boat. He's got some cool new travel videos. Also travel related, Bald and Bankrupt, Simon Wilson and Times with James. Those are great channels. I'm also enjoying some reseller videos by uh, Nick and Andrea Hills, George Ross and Craigslist Hunter. They do videos about finding stuff in charity shops, car boot sales, things like that, and then selling stuff on, on eBay. Uh, I don't know why I watch those, but I just find them interesting. And yeah, loads of other stuff too, but that'll do for now. I'll leave links to all of the channels I've mentioned in the description box below. My YouTuber friends, Sumo, Carl Pope, and David at Grumpy's Workshop have all asked if I've got any tips or advice about running a YouTube channel, and also about working with the YouTube algorithm. I'm definitely not an expert on that stuff, but I do have more tips and advice than I could possibly fit into a small segment in a Q&A video. So I am looking to do a video about that in future. I've already written a script for it, and that will be on my channel at some point in future, so stay tuned for that, and hopefully some of that advice might help you. But I would urge anyone watching to subscribe to Sumo, Culpope Woodcraft, and Grumpy's Workshop's YouTube channels. I'll link to those down below. Byron asks how I got into woodworking and what was my profession before. My profession before is still my profession because I'm still working part-time at my day job while doing this stuff part-time as well. In terms of how I got started, I was a musician at the time and I needed to make various things like desks to hold music equipment and a pedal board for playing gigs when I used to play guitar. So those were some of my first projects and that's how I got started. AV You and Me asks if I was a punk rock skateboarding rock scene type of kid. I do have a bit of a musical background. I played in various bands for probably 25 odd years of my life. Although I wouldn't say that punk or skateboarding fitted into what I did. But if you want to check out some of the music I was involved with, I will leave a link to that below too. Sean Evely asks what new process I'm keen on learning and trying out. I definitely want to do more upholstery. I did a project just before Christmas where I re-upholstered a Parkinol chair. I really enjoyed that and I really want to do more of it. But also I'd like to get a good set of carving chisels and start doing more carving work. Um, something which Sean Evely himself does really well. If you're not familiar with his channel, I'd suggest checking it out and I'll leave a link to that in the description box below too. Both Gigi Woodwork and Cheryl are checking up on my cat Dylan and wondering why his appearances have lessened in my videos. Uh, the main reason for that is because he doesn't come into the workshop because we discourage him from coming to the front side of the house because that's where the busy road is. Whereas the back side of the house is all green grass and fields and he loves it out there anyway so that's where he spends most of his time when he's outside of the house. As any cat owner will know, trying to get a cat to do what you want it to do is pretty much impossible. So we tend to keep him in at night where there's more of a risk that he might venture out to the front side of the house and then during the day he just goes out the back. Maybe I'll put together a video all about him on my second YouTube channel, which I'll link to in the description box below, because a lot of people are asking about him. Mandy asks if I would consider a cat flap entry for Dylan in future. I presume she means to the workshop, and no, because obviously we don't really want Dylan at this side of the house, as I've already talked about. But I have put in a cat flap recently into a glazed door, and I was thinking about making that into a project video, but. In the end, I decided it probably wasn't interesting enough, so that one got scrapped. Hey, 